Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is our Old Testament reading. It comes to us from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Listen again to the words of verses 28 through 31 that say to us this morning. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall fail, faint, and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is God's word that blesses us as we gather this Sunday morning. The Hebrew word zakar is a common word in the Old Testament. According to one resource, the word zakar occurs 233 times. It's not a real high number. If you do the math, by dividing the 39 books of the Old Testament into the 233 uses of this word, it only averages to be about six times through each Old Testament book. Again, not a real high number. But beside the number usage of this word in the Old Testament, this word zakar is really important. It's really, really important. The meaning, you might ask, what is the meaning? Well, the word zakar means to remember. It often calls God's people to remember who he is and what he has done for them. A few examples from the Old Testament. Call to mind how important it was for God's people to remember him and remember what he had done for them. For example, the Lord delivered his people out of Egyptian slavery through the Passover. At that time, he told his people to celebrate the Passover in the future. In Exodus 12, verse 14, the Lord says, This day shall be for you a memorial day. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. In this way, God's people were to remember the Lord and what he had done for them. Another example is when the Lord let the Israelites across the Jordan River into the promised land on dry ground. At that time, the Lord called his people to set up 12 stones. Joshua chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 say, When your children ask in that time to come, what do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. In this way, God's people were called to remember him and what he had done for them. One final example is found in the book of Esther. There, an evil plot was devised and carried out to the political powers of the day. The plan was to eradicate all Jews. But the Lord intervened. The Lord saved his people through Esther. Esther chapter 9, verse 28 says, These days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, in every clan, province, and city, that these days of Purim should never fall into disuse among the Jews nor should the commemoration of these days cease among their descendants. In this way, God's people were called to remember him and what he had done for them. As we turn to our Old Testament reading today, it's interesting to note, it does not include the word remember. It's not found in today's reading. But, aside from that fact, today's reading is all about remembering. The context of today's reading finds God's people in despair. 
their life at this point had spiraled out of control. Their focus had become fixated on the problems of life. The problems of life, without a doubt, were real. The northern kingdom of Israel would be defeated by the Assyrians. The Assyrians being an evil, non-God-fearing people, which would lead God's people into exile. And the southern kingdom of Judah, in due time, would be defeated by the Babylonians. The Babylonians also being an evil, non-God-fearing nation, which would lead God's people into exile. Life in this way was not in their control. Life in this way was out of their control. God's people, to God's people it seemed that ungodly nations, ungodly leaders, and ungodly people were in control. And to make matters worse, the Babylonians even boasted about themselves being in control. Isaiah 47, verses 8 and 10, the Babylonians are quoted twice as saying, I am, and there is no one besides me. For this reason, God's people would lament. In the words of Psalm 137, they would say, By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept. For there our captors required of us songs, And our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And for this reason, God's people would say in verse 27 today, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. As we apply God's word to our lives today, we might say, There is nothing new under the sun. This is to say we experience a lot of the same things that God's people of old did. How often have you found yourself lately shaking your head and saying over the course of these past few weeks and months, life is so out of control. Of course, the coronavirus has had control over our lives, it seems like, forever. And now with talk of mutations and various strains, we might wonder if it will ever end. Of course, we've heard plenty of talk about political powers and financial powers as of late, too. People who have position and power to do whatever they want to do. In a lot of ways, secularization continues to advance in our country. Hostility toward Christianity increases in many ways. And this is to say nothing about how life may seem out of control at work, at school, and even at home. And the natural result of all this is that it causes great fear and trepidation in us. We long for control, but yet we don't find it. We pine for control, so we worry and we're filled with anxiety. We want control so bad that maybe we are tempted to take matters into our own hands too. But when control in the way that we want it doesn't come, we often fall into despair. We are tempted to lose hope. We are tempted to let the weight of the world around us crush us. But it is right here where God's word says to us today, don't forget me. God's word for us today says, remember who I am. His word for us today says, remember what I have done for you. Verse 28 today says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint, no grow, nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And so then the context of today's reading reminds us of who God is. Does it ever remind us of who God is? 
before today's text, God's word says that he can measure the waters of the earth in the hollow of his hand. In the hollow of his hand. The earth is over 70% water. Still, God can measure it in the hollow of his hand. His word says that he has marked off the heavens with a span. A span is the distance between one's thumb and little finger. That is a span. Well, the Milky Way alone is 104,000 light years across. And the Hubble telescope tells us that there are hundreds of billions more galaxies in the universe. Yet still, the Lord measures it with the span of his hand. His word says that he's able to enclose the dust of the earth in a measure. All the dirt of the earth is incalculable. Yet the Lord is able to measure it. His word also says that he's able to weigh all the mountains and the hills on his scale. Mount Everest alone is five and a half miles high. His word says he's able to measure all the mountains all the hills, easily on his scales. Furthermore, when it comes to political powers, ungodly leaders, and evil people, the Lord has the upper hand there too. Isaiah 40, verse 17 says, All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. This all says that God is in control. But at this point, I think one more thing needs to be mentioned. That is to say, the Lord, who is in control of all things, uses that control for our good. Verse 29 today says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. And the way that our Lord does this is through the cross of Christ and his empty tomb. For through Jesus' work for us, sin no longer controls us. Death no longer controls us. The power of the devil, his work, his ways, has no control over us. Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14 say it this way. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so that we might not forget the work of God in Christ for us, the Lord says in the words of institution, in the Lord's Supper, do this in remembrance of me. This is to say it may not look like it, but the the fact does remain. Our lives are firmly planted in our Lord's control. And so then today, God's word calls us to remember our big God, to remember that He is in control, to remember that He uses everything for our good that's in His control. And so today's text calls us to remember our big God. But in so doing, it also calls us to remember the big picture. Yes, to remember that our life is found in Him, to remember that we can trust in Him, to remember that our strength is found as we wait on Him. But of course, waiting here does not mean that we just sit around. Waiting doesn't mean that we lie in bed all day. No, to wait on the Lord means that we trust Him in all things. It means that we depend on Him for our needs. It means that we wait expectantly and confidently, knowing that He will provide for us. In this way, the weight of the world is not on our shoulders It's not on your shoulders either. No, the weight of the world is firmly and squarely placed on the shoulders of our Lord. And so we live our faith wherever God has placed us. We live out our faith in our vocations, knowing that He is watching over us, knowing that He will provide for us, knowing He will, because He controls all things and He loves us too. One day, on the last day, 
We won't need eyes of faith to see it. But until then, we remember. We remember our big God. We remember what He has done for us. And as we remember in this way, we also remember the big picture. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God that does pass all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.